Do you remember those days in elementary school when you accidentally swallowed your chewing gum? And were told that it would remain in your stomach for seven years? Yeah, we all do. Ever wondered if you still have some gum in your system from your grade school days? Where did this myth come from? Unfortunately, we cannot really say where the myth originated, so we are going to do some investigation. As with myths like the boogeyman, the rumor that gum remains in your stomach may have been told to scare children to keep them safe. Little kids may not understand that gum should not be swallowed. So passing on this myth may have been a way to prevent children from swallowing gum and accidentally choking. Whatever the origin, the idea that gum remains in your stomach for seven years has remained popular over the years. In order to find the sticky truth to this myth, let us investigate. How is food normally digested? Before we can answer this, it is important to know that digestion involves the mechanical and chemical breakdown of food from large molecules to smaller ones. Once the food enters our mouth, it follows along the gastrointestinal or GI tract. The GI tract is a series of organs that are joined in a long, twisting tube from the mouth to the anus. Throughout this tract, our food encounters many enzymes. Enzymes are very important biological substances that chemically break down food from larger molecules to smaller ones. So we begin at the mouth, where we take a bite into that juicy burger. Through chewing, together with an enzyme in our saliva called amylase, we mechanically break down the large, complex carbohydrates that are usually found in foods like fruits, pasta, and bread. The result is a small, round, and moist ball of food called a bolus that is then swallowed and travels down the esophagus, a muscular tube that connects the throat to the stomach. Once the food enters our stomach, several processes begin to take place. Firstly, we mentioned amylase in our mouth, an enzyme that helps break down carbohydrates. Similar to amylase, the stomach also contains many enzymes that help break down different components of our food. The stomach also contains a lot of stomach juice. This juice is a mixture of mostly hydrochloric acid and salts known as gastric acid. This juice helps break down the partially solid food into a more of a fluid substance called chyme. After the stomach mixes everything up with its muscular actions, the chyme can easily pass through to our small intestines. Finally, the food in the small and large intestines is further broken down and nutrients that are important to the body are absorbed. After all this, whatever is left is then flushed down the toilet after passing through the rectum and out the anus. Before we get into the digestion of gum, why don't we first take a look at the properties of gum? That means, what does it consist of? Chewing gum is made of a natural or artificial sweeteners, softeners, flavoring agents, and a gum base. Gum is harder to digest due to the physical and chemical properties of the main ingredient, the gum base. The gum base is the core that gives the gum its rubbery texture, which is unable to be completely broken down and dissolved within our system, unlike its other ingredients. Elastomers are polymers, important for the elastic and tacky nature of the gum. Spearmint oil is often used as a flavoring agent, which also has a water-repelling nature. This helps to prevent the gum from becoming hard as you chew it, and adds to the taste of gum to provide longer-lasting flavor. Now that we know the differences between gum and regular food, let's look closer at exactly what happens when you swallow a piece of chewing gum. First things first, as mentioned earlier, gum's main property is its gum base, giving it that chewy, rubbery texture. We all know that gum once entering our mouths cannot be mechanically broken down into smaller pieces. You can chew and chew for hours and yet nothing seems to happen. So if you do swallow the gum, it is going down as one big clump. As mentioned earlier, most of the molecules in the gum are carbohydrates, oils, and alcohols. Similar to normal digestion, our body can use the same enzymes, such as amylase found in the saliva, to break down carbohydrates. So what happens to the rubbery polymer base that don't have enzymes to digest? Well, let's look at the stomach. Stomach acid, or gastric acid, is strong, yet it still will not dissolve the polymers that the gum is made of. In fact, rubber is actually very good at shielding from acids in general, which is why we wear rubber gloves. Next, the intestines. Here, food is further broken down and nutrients that are important to the human body are absorbed. The same thing applies to gum, yet that rubber polymer still seems to be of concern. However, our body actually has that ability to move unabsorbed and the remaining components, such as this rubber base, through one's digestive system. 
storing it in the rectum until it is ready to be expelled through the anus. So yes, part of the gum does seem to last through digestion. But no, that does not mean that the gum you swallowed in grade school is still there. You eat plenty of food that your body can only partially digest. Similarly, even though you do not break down the rubber polymers, your body has no problem moving that lump of gum through your digestive system and out the other end within a day or two. Although gum does not stay in your digestive system for seven years of swallowed, is it harmful to swallow gum? Should we be concerned if we do? Swallowing a lot of gum in a short period of time can be potentially harmful because the gum can accumulate in the intestines and wreck them. As reported in a paper in 1998, this, coupled with constipation, can cause minor blockages in the intestines. For this reason, frequent swallowing of gum is discouraged, especially for children. So the gum you swallowed in elementary school is probably not in your system. However, it's always best to try to avoid swallowing gum, unless you're in the mood for a sticky situation. Thank you for watching! For more information, please go to demystifyingmedicine.ca and subscribe.